الحمد لله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه جميعنا ما بعد أنا نسي نادي الله تعالى عنه أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يتنفس في الشراب ثلاثا متفق عليه أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام الحمد لله we thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى for the توفيق to be sitting before this very blessed book and inshallah taking some ahadith from these few chapters inshallah we'll be covering a few chapters these are the final chapters of food so we'll take the title heading and we'll take two two hadith about food um and then this cha- this chapter about or this book about or this section about food is come to an end the first one is 111 it's a chapter in the manners of drink and the fact that it's recommended to take three breaths outside of the utensil and it's disliked to breathe into the cup so when you're drinking you take three um th- three breaths when you're when you're drinking like you pause uh, three times and it's disliked that you breathe into the utensil and it's recommended that if you're serving food and you're handing food over to the person next to you that you pass it on towards the right you hand it out to the person on the right to the right and moves on this way the first hadith here and anas radiyallahu ta'ala anna rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam kana yatanaffas fi sharab thalathan the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to breathe take three breaths while drinking so the the way you follow this sometime you know you might want to drink a lot of beverage and you're thinking that with three sips you won't be able to finish it or you need to have a lot of drink of water so the way to do it is that you go from small to big so the first sip Uh, you have small sip and then maybe a bigger sip if you're trying to drink, drink a lot so you could still in three sips drink more so hopefully that makes sense also in another place it mentions that you don't gulp it you know you don't make that noise of gulping and you don't breathe into the cup okay, next hadith next hadith says qal qal rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam la tashrabu wahidan ka shurb al-bair walakin ishrabu mathna wa thulath it says that don't drink like like a camel or rather drink in two sips or three you know like a like a camel sips it all up maybe it would just drink in with, with one breath so it says don't drink like a camel one breath do it in two or two and three and say bismillah before you drink alhamdulillah after i don't know if you remember a long time ago we did a hadith about food that if you just say alhamdulillah at the end of your meal it, it's a forgiveness for um it's a forgiveness for your sins the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he prohibited i'm coming i'm just translating all there's so many hadith here so i'm just translating the next one the next one the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam prohibited breathing into the utensils the next hadith by anas radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam utiya bi laban the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given milk qad shiba bi ma it was mixed with water he was given you know milk which was mixed with water وعن يمينه اعرابي and there was a bedouin on his right and abu bakr was on his left the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fashariba he drank thumma a'ta al-a'rabi then he gave the drink to the bedouin wa qala al-ayman fal ayman the right and right so we learn from this hadith that look on the one hand on the left side he had abu bakr radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and on the right side he just had a normal uh, person just anyone on his right a bedouin but he still gave to the right right is a sunnah that you always do things with the right and also you serve from the right So hopefully these ahadith are easy and i think they're um you, just by the translation we're able to understand them and the main uh, message of it and sahal ibn sa'd the next hadith anna rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam utiya bi sharab prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was given a drink fashariba minhu prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam drank from it and on his right was a boy wa an yasarihi ashyakh there were some elderly people on his left qala lil ghulam he said to the boy ata'dhanu li and u'tiya haula he on the right he had a young boy and on the left he had some elders so he asked the young boy prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that do you mind if i just give the drink to the elders because the elders are on the left and we're supposed to serve from the right so do you mind if i just give them they're the elders faqala al-ghulam la wallahi the boy said no i swear by allah no don't do that la i don't want i don't prefer my share because because obviously the the cup that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is um passing on is something he has drank from so he said i don't prefer anyone for me to have the next drink after to drink after the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is so valuable to me that i don't prefer anyone doesn't matter if there's elders on the other side i still want to go next to my drink but then so rasulullah sallam handed it to the boy 
there's a couple of things to learn from this hadith. One thing is we learn the humbleness of Rasulullah the Prophet being such a Nabi and such a great, um, such a big person, he was still so humble that he asked a boy if he can hand it to the other side. So it shows his humbleness. Um, and also teaches us also that if we are not going to serve the food from the right, then we can take permission from the people on the right that we're going to serve the food from the left if they don't mind. And if they allow, then um, uh, then that will be fine. Because there's two things here. Serving from the right, right? That's also a sunnah. And serving the adults first. That's also a sunnah, right? So you're in between two sunnahs. That's why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked a young person, that, do you mind if I just start serving from the left? So there's a lot to be learned from that hadith there. May Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala give us tawfiq to do amal. Moving on to the next chapter. Next chapter is 112. This is the dislikeness of drinking from the mouth of the bottle. You know, you have a jug or a container and you lift it up to your mouth and you drink. Prophet ﷺ prohibited that. And Abu Huraira, this hadith by Abu Huraira, he says, Naha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and yushraba min fissiqa awil qirba. He prohibited the drinking from, uh, directly from, uh, from a bottle. Okay, so it's sunnah is that you pour it out. That's why you may see sometime um, someone practicing, you see notice somebody has a bottle and they have a cup next to it. The reason to that is it's a sunnah to pour it out. Okay. So, <clears throat> so we should try to practice this as much as possible. <clears throat> Although nowadays our spring water bottles are fine. They're small. I'm saying those small water bottles are fine. Uh, just don't do that with a big two liter Pepsi bottle. I'm saying maybe, I mean, personally, I don't see, I would say that it doesn't look civilized either, right? Taking a big, um, uh, milk bottle, two liter bottle, and trying to uh, you know sip it doesn't even look so respectful. So we should avoid that. The sunnah is that from the big bottles we pour into the small. But if you're having a small water bottles, drinking directly from it, that should be fine. But even from the small water bottles, if you pour it out, you're still gonna get the thawab for pouring it out. So if someone wishes to follow that, you know they should go ahead. Moving on to the next hadith. Uh, next chapter. Next chapter is 113. It's the dislikeness of blowing into the food. And the Nabiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the Prophet, uh, this hadith is by Abu Sa'id and Khudri radiallahu ta'ala he says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam naha anil tanafukh anil nafkh fil sharab he prohibited from blowing into the drink. Faqala rajul a man said al-qadat that what if there is something in my drink right there's something um, there's like a some some dirt or some hair or something something that's there in my drink so i need to blow on it so i can push it away like i'm seeing something in my utensil so i'm, I'm that's what i need to blow into my prophet said prohibited blowing so he's saying i'm seeing something in my drink and i need to blow at it so i can remove it so prophet said told him no well instead of blowing at it why don't you just spill it so if you have to remove something, why don't you spill a little bit of water and then take it out like that. So then you can drink the rest of the water, you can spill some part out. He said, Inni la arwa. Uh, but, but let me explain that a little bit more. But it depends if it's an expensive drink and you don't wish to you know, lose even a sip of that expensive drink, you can just take it out with a spoon, whatever you don't want in there. Uh, and you can still hold on to that rule that don't blow in it. Um, so you can take it out with a spoon or you can spill or take it out with a spoon. All he said, Inni la arwa min nafsin wahida. Okay, next hadith, Ali ibn Abbas is by Ibn Abbas, the Lord of Anhuma. And the Nabi said, Allah said, that the Prophet said, Salam naha, and you the nafasa fil ina. He prohibited that you breathe into the cup, or you infach fi, you take breaths into the cup, or you blow in it. Two things that are prohibited, right? We take. If you need to take a breath, you take outside of the cup and you drink in three sips. I'm kind of summarizing all the hadith, right? And if you need to drink a lot, then you start off from small to big. So the first sip should be small. The next one could be a little bigger. Next one, and you sip, you don't gulp. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq. The next chapter is chapter 114. Chapter in the permissibility of drinking standing 
and uh, and explain and the explanation that that more the superior position is to sit to to drink sitting. Let me explain this. So when we drink, the sunnah is to sit down and drink. So the best of your ability, um, whenever possible, that you should sit down and observe that sunnah. That you take a sip, you hold it with your right hand, you sip it in the way that's been mentioned, and you take a seat where possible. Um, the zamzam water, the sunnah is to stand and drink. Okay. So coming to the first hadith, the first hadith is about zamzam water. And Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala huma says, Saqaytun Nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I gave the Nabi, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, min zamzam. I gave the Nabi, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, some zamzam. Fashariba, he drank. Wahuwa qa'im, when he was standing. So zamzam water, <clears throat> you, can, you will drink standing. Also, du'as are accepted when you drink zamzam water. You can face the qibla at that time. And you can make a du'a first, and then you can drink zamzam water. The other drinks, you should drink them sitting. Coming to the next chapter. Babun fi istihbabi kawne saqil qawm akhiruhum shurban. Chapter in the recommendation that the one who gives drink should take the drink last. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to practice all the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu And this one that we're um, remember, reminding ourselves of is that when you are, if you're the one serving the food, it says drink. So especially in drink, but you can, of course, apply that in other foods as well. That if you're, if you're the one serving, that you drink last, it's a sunnah. How many of us, uh, you know, uh, we should try to practice this as much as we can. That you serve, everyone is served, then you serve yourself. Okay, That's also uh, honorable. Obviously, all these sunnah are adab. They're all already something that we can sense. They're very, uh, uh, you know, honorable traits and they're also the sunnah but you make the intention this is the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu so you get a reward for it as well and the hadith is anabi qatada is by abi qatada radiallahu ta'ala anhu an nabi from the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam he said saqil qawm the one who gives drink to people akhiruhum shurb he should be the last to drink so when you're serving then you serve yourself last and then when you do that um the what i might have written that your honor increases your honor increases so what a beautiful sunnah, that your honor increases. So try to do that. When you're hosting, uh, when you get an opportunity to serve, then you serve in this way that you've served everyone and you take it last. And then you also remember that this is a sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah give tawfiq. And we have the last chapter. Yep, last chapter for today. This is the last chapter um, in regards to food. Chapter 116. Babun fi awani al it's permissible to drink from pure utensils. So if you have any type of a utensil could be made out of various um, uh, glass or metal cup, steel cup, all any pure utensil is permissible that you drink from other than gold. So your cups and your dishes could be from any material except for gold and silver. And so that's prohibited for men and women. You don't drink because it's a it's sign of arrogance. Very gold and silver is for money. And you're drinking out of that. So that's been prohibited for men and for women from drinking out of gold and cup utensils. And it's permissible to drink um, from a river with your mouth, directly in your, to your mouth. And generally gold and silver shouldn't be used for your drinking or eating. Or purification. You should just shouldn't have any utensils that are gold and silver prohibited for men and women. Now, underneath this chapter, there are many ahadith. I'll just be sharing one with you. An Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Hudayfa radiallahu ta'ala anhu relates that he says that in the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa nahana an al hariri wa dibaj, that he prohibited us from silk. So women are allowed silk, men are not allowed silk. Uh, men are not allowed silk, but women are allowed silk. In Jannah, men will be allowed silk. So these are little, little rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a test for us. And then the next part is, وَالشُرْبْ فِي آنِيَةِ الذَّهَبُ الْفِضَّةِ He didn't allow, it just says, in the hadith it just says drink, but we know in the title heading it said food as well. So food or drink or any other purpose. You don't use cups, any use using item, you don't get it in gold and silver. 
Um, and just on a side note, it's not here, but just on a side note, now that we're talking about gold and silver, you know, jewelry is only allowed for women. Men may wear a watch or a ring, but in the ring, they can't have gold. They could have silver, but some of it may be silver. There's a small percentage I can, if anybody needs that, we can get them the number to it. How much silver is allowed in there? The men's ring. But the ladies, the ring could be completely silver, could be completely gold. Also in clothing, in certain clothing, uh, they have certain silver. They literally have silk inside. So silk will not be permissible. Um, uh, also there's quantities. Uh, in terms of silver, certain amount of silver may be tolerable for men. But in case anybody needs to know, we can find out what that number is for men. But of course the women could wear silver and gold. And then the hadith ends, وقال, and he said, Hiya lahum fi dunya, that look, the silver uh, is for, it's for them in the dunya, meaning that the, men, the kufar men could wear silver. Wahiya lakum fil akhirah, and it is for you in the akhirah. Allah SWT has made silk that way. So these were some rules about food. The next book that's coming up um, is about clothing, and inshallah we'll start that next time about clothing. Wa da'wana, alhamdulillah, bi alameen. Subhanallah, wa bihamdi, subhanallah, al azim. If there's any questions, I can take it. Anything pertaining to food or this chapter that we mentioned? If not, we'll make a short dua and we'll close. <laughs>